If your determination is fixed, I do not counsel you to despair. Few things are impossible to diligence and skill. Great works are performed not by strength, but by perseverance. Samuel Johnson. My friends, not strength, perseverance. Stick with this. That's all you have to do. Stick with it each and every day, 10 to 15 minutes. That is all we ask Patreon members. As soon as I finish today's daily review, I will be recording your charting crypto material. So you can always check at the Patreon site. We upload everything there. We also email things out to you. If you don't see an email, always check on Wednesdays and Thursdays in your spam box in case it went there. If you don't have access to your email, then just go to the Patreon page, log in. You have access to everything there. If you're not a Patreon member, you appreciate what we do at any of the three levels. You get, of course, the number one thing, which is our options training, Options Made Simple, the Charting Wealth Way three-part series available to you from the get-go. And then once a week, we give you the Charting Crypto on Wednesdays, on Thursdays, the 20 weekly vertical crossovers. Once a month, the live question and answer call-in session where we help you backtrack your favorite stocks and ETFs for practice trading, and we answer all your questions. Let's jump into these charts. We see stocks, both indexes, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 at the end of the day down a little bit. The S&P down 0.18%, the NASDAQ down 0.15%. We see bonds rocketing up 2.75%. They're the big gainer for the day. Gold up some, 0.40%. Bitcoin down again. Bitcoin is just struggling. Look at that, 1961 from a high of what, 61,000, something like that again. Now this is our Bitcoin uh, strategy ETF. Let's see. Oh gosh, I guess I got to go to the weekly to even find how, um, look at this, what a mess. Um, this this kind of red butchery is just sad to see. But yeah, somewhere around the $61,000 mark. Now again, this is an ETF that tracks Bitcoin around 10% of its value. So, or no, even less than that. What, one-tenth of 1%? One Something like that. But anyway, we like it. We'll talk about it here in just a minute. It's the Vanek ETF uh, Bitcoin strategy. And it is a futures ETF that tracks Bitcoin. We really like it because it makes it quite easy on us to see what's going on and figure it out. And of course, it's easy to trade, easy to practice trade. We're not doing anything with Bitcoin right now because it just keeps getting hammered down. Let's go to the S&P first. We have two days of the market trying to move up. Now, overall, it was down for the day, but we can see green candles. We're below the 200 EMA, so we're not looking for an up move. What we're waiting for is to hopefully see this green STC rocket up through this center zone here, this little gray area with those bars. We want it to go to the top so that it can rotate over again like it did last time, and we can do what we did last time and jump in for a nice short position either on puts or SH, which is the Bitcoin short. It's the single inverse. It's one of many different inverse funds on the S&P 500. Did I say, did I say Bitcoin just now? Switching over from Bitcoin to the S&P 500. It's not even been a long day. Uh, but what we're talking about now is the S&P 500. It is what was Again, down a little bit for the day. Two days of green candles. We're waiting for it to rotate over going down so we can jump in on another down move. Why do we think that? Well, because we're negative 15 on our success multiplier formula. We, uh, well, we're negative 14 because we went green in the afternoon. The two day is still determinedly down the weekly still down. The only thing that's up is the half day. And again, we want that to move up enough that we get a nice clean pullback before things cross back over going down. What about the Qs? Same thing happening. It actually started earlier. It switched over going up back on the morning of the 21st. 
And then in the afternoon, again, overall for the day down a little bit, 0.15%. But we like seeing the green STC heading up so that when it pulls back, it'll give us a clear opportunity like we did last time to jump in and garner a little more profit in an inverse trade. So that is where we are when it comes to our stocks, both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. It's good to see those things moving in an opposite direction, potentially giving us a setup for more short trades. Oh, and by the way, we are also on the NASDAQ 100 below the 200 EMA. We are negative on the two-day. We are negative on the weekly. And what does that mean? We're at a negative 14. So again, lots of downward pressure on stocks. What about bonds? Bonds up for the day, booming up 2.75%. That is beautiful now. Bonds have a long way to go. I have to keep trucking down there. We are way below the 200 EMA. We are positive on the half-day chart. Two-day chart is negative. And in fact, you can see how far below, let me pull this down, we are from the 200 EMA. So we're a negative four there. We're a negative 10 there on the weekly. It also is well below the 200 EMA. 400 weeks, again, is what that EMA represents. So lots of downward pressure on bonds still. Good to see them moving up on this half-day chart, but you can tell what's really been happening with bonds. They ran down on the half-day chart and then slid sideways, popped up for a day and a half popping up again for a day. So we'll keep our eye on things and just let the charts lead us where they may. If we see things rolling over hard again, like we're hoping for with stocks, we can jump back into bonds. Remember, TBF is the inverse fund for bonds. So when bonds are going down, TBF goes up. Now, these inverse funds are something we always encourage you to practice trade. We've got some great trainings on how to use inverse funds and the inherent problems with them. High fees and they're revalued quite often, every day, many times. So if it goes up 2%, it resets itself and it goes down 2% the next day, it can actually go below the price that it started at. So again, there's some problems with these types of ETFs, these inverse funds, but at the same time, they do allow you opportunities if things are moving in the right direction, particularly if that movement is fierce. Now, let's move on from bonds. Go to gold. Gold up a little bit for the day, 0.40%. Nice to see that STC green moving up. We can see where recently, back on June the 10th, gold bounced off that 200 EMA on the half-day chart, moved down, then back up, down a little, and now it's just sort of in this sideways slide position, like we set up a little bit, booming up in the morning and then pulling back in the afternoon for a doji. Now we are green on the STC on the half day, on the two day. We are negative on the weekly. We are negative. So we're keeping our eye on gold, paying attention, waiting again for a possible rotation over going down. What's up? With Bitcoin, I talked about it a little bit. Oh, we had just that huge disaster week where we had that gigantic loss day back on the 13th of June. And things have just continued to move down. They slowed down recently. Popped up, we can see, in the morning on the 21st. And then have just deteriorated again, moving to lower lows. Bitcoin just can't get a break. How long will this go on? How low will it go? I can't tell you, my friends, except if you are in Bitcoin right now, you are a dummy. You have had one warning after another, after another, after another to tell you to get the hell out and stay out. We're looking at the two-day there, the weekly here, plumbing even lower lows. We've tracked Bitcoin for you for quite a while. It's not hard to track. It's easy to see the patterns. And we were told long ago to get out of Bitcoin. Don't let yourself get hammered. We had some good short trades uh, that we followed for you, but no interest 
in being in Bitcoin in any way at this point, nor to have any money in any crypto exchange. Honestly, that is why, again, we've been talking to you about paying attention to some of these ETFs that are out there, particularly something like Van Eck. Now, I make no guarantees for any of this stuff. In fact, we're not a stock calling service, Bitcoin calling service, commodity calling service. We're none of those things. We're an education firm. We want you to practice trade. Again, with everything that we talk about. Uh, we're not about to start giving out market advice. You are to make up your own mind and perhaps seek advice from anyone who you consider to be a professional who you are paying for that advice. Uh, that is the best way I would urge you if you're going to get any besides being self-taught and learning on your own. That is how I did it. Years of practice years of practice trading, fractional trading, which is using small dollar amounts, and then getting into real money trading when I'd convinced myself that I knew what I was doing. And again, continuing to hone those skills. So Bitcoin still getting stuck. And we can't wait for it to turn around just like gold, just like stocks, bonds, you name it. I want to buy it. And when the charts tell me to buy it, I'll be buying, buying it. When it tells me to sell it short, I'll be selling it short. Uh, again, I let the charts lead me. I encourage you to practice, practice, practice. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. And remember, it's perfect practice that makes perfect. Hold yourself accountable. Do all the practice trades you can. When you start getting good, consider doing some fractional small dollar trades so you can practice what it's like to put in a limit order, what it's like to put in uh, a trailing stop, what it's like to put in a good till canceled sell order, all those kinds of things that you only learn by doing and you get comfortable doing it. I'm so comfortable doing trades now. I don't think about it. I don't sweat it. I remember the days when I did. I don't anymore. And hopefully you'll get there too. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth. World Headquarters.